we're back on this patio area. We got it all figured out what we did wrong, why the fire pit wasn't centered. We just forgot to lay the last row here and we were a half row short over there. So we measured it all. Patio, fire pit is actually on center. We got that figured out. We laid out that extra row. Everything's looking good. We can work on these inlays. It's gonna be complicated. It's gonna be really hard. There's gonna be times where I say, why did I pick this profession? But it's gonna be worth it. We'll get some drone shots by the end of the day. Stay tuned. this not even once but this is the most complicated project that we've ever done i don't know why we decided to do this crazy inlay with two different depth pavers but we're up for the challenge we're gonna make this happen and what we're doing follow me pat come on come on we're making a ring around the fire pit we don't want to put pavers right up to the fire pit because with this graphics wall it has different dimensions and it'll look weird if you have pavers go right up to it so we're gonna have a ring of some black polished stone there we're gonna have this industry go all the way around it and then in here diamond industria combo just like this going into the corners it's gonna be a long day i hope we can figure this out by the end of it so what we got to do is change some of these cuts most of the cuts because we added more this way and that way that was really the problem with the fire pit was this wasn't right so we made that right then it made the cuts wrong so what we have to do is cut a little bit more off of this side, add a little bit here, and recut these three inlays here. That one's actually okay. That's the only one that's okay. The rest of them we have to recut, and we'll get that done. And then the rest of it, a lot of the hard stuff's kind of done. After these cuts, we should fly through the rest of this. This inlay should be done today. Please! So we have our new lines marked. We're ready to cut those. We have to change them on those three. And what I didn't think about that we'll probably do for next time is just doing it right the first time. That was something that I didn't really think about uh, strategy-wise for this project, but next time, and if you're gonna start a project like this, try to do it right the first time, and it's gonna save you a lot of time. So we're gonna try to remember that. But this one's coming together. This is pretty much the detail that we're going for here. I messed up one of these cuts here. Pat, show them my mess up. I measured it wrong, but we're gonna get that recut and it's looking pretty sick check it out check this is gonna go like this we got the arrows pointing towards the fire pit we got this little piece in the corner here that's all cut good so we'll recut that we got like a zillion cuts to make here it's finally starting to come together though this is sweet hey sean what are you doing there oh hey pat i'm just laying some of these uh diamond pavers in our inlay here this has been one of the trickiest parts of this whole install is using the two different depth pavers. And what I would do in the future if I were to redo this would be screed a thicker layer of that 3 8 chipstone setting bed so that you can screed that away. Right now we have about an inch of that. So when we take that away, we're left with bigger rocks which make it harder to set the pavers. And if I were to do it again, I would have that thicker bed. I could screed it away. There would still be some of that chipstone and everything would stay nice and flat. So I would recommend that if you're using two different depth pavers and that's what I'll do in the future. One of the last things you wanna do is run the compactor over the pavers once they're laid. Once we put the poly sand in, we'll compact again, but this is gonna even out any discrepancies. Another one of the trials and tribulations here. When we have so many different heights going on with the different depth pavers, sometimes you can lose sight of things. And we ended up with a small hump here that shouldn't have been there. So now we gotta take some of these out, re-level that a little bit. There's so many things I would do differently if we were starting this from scratch, but we're not. So I can't get into that. I can't worry about it. We just gotta fix this little area. And really for all the complicated stuff we did, for this to be a kind of a little bit out of level, that's all right. It's an easy fix. We'll take some of these screenings out, put our pavers back down, we'll be money, and uh, we're just not gonna rush it. We're gonna get it right, and that's what we do. Finally finished this up. There was a million things that were a lot harder than expected. Things I would have done differently from the beginning is, what's up Biscuit, hey. Things I would have done differently are laid everything out first before doing the fire pit. That way we could have squared the outside, 
done string lines across diagonally and figured out the center of the fire pit. So that was probably the biggest thing. The other thing is, if you're doing an inlay like this, pick pavers that are the same thickness because when you have all these different parts and they're all so close to each other, it makes it super difficult to get it all level. So uh, a patio that even with this complex pattern should take maybe two days, it took us like four days and we still have some work to do. So those are my tips if you're doing this. I'm probably never gonna do two different depth pavers again, especially on an inlay like this because it's just super difficult. So that's it, but we're done now. It looks sick. Check out the drone picks.